Hello and welcome back. We are going to continue our cannon shooting project by adding a new and exciting feature, stolen, <coughs> I mean inspired from other games. Now this is an excellent opportunity to figure out how to implement certain functionality in your own game by using the simple cannon shooting, or rather cannon shooter project as an example. Now to do that we first will have to convert our project to Godot 3.0, so this video is dedicated to that alone. And from there on we are going to move on to adding functionality. We are going to download Godot 2.6 in order to convert the older 2.x project to 3.x. So on Godot's engine's website, go to download, go down to find Godot 2.1.6 downloads, select that, and find the appropriate version for you. In my case, since I'm running on Windows 10, I am going to use the Windows 64-bit download here. And when that is done, on the description of this video, you can find the same project we used in the Canon Shooting Project Part 6. So download that and unzip this. I'm just gonna drag and drop this out here. And when that is done, we're going to open Godot 2.x. We're going to scan and find the project, which happens to be on my desktop here. Select open. Let's try one more time. There we go. Opening that. Well, let's take a quick look before we convert this now. I'm just gonna hit play and make sure it still works, that nothing is broken and everything is as expected. So we can see we're shooting, we have an explosion, it uh, it shakes and we lose health and it disappears. And that is the way we left it. So let's close this and convert it. Hit tools, export to Godot 3.0. And let's find a good suitable folder to export this. So I'm going back to my desk here. I'm going to create a new folder and name this the uh, 07 cannon shooter which is this part and hit open and when that's done we can close this we don't need this anymore however if you are on your own project i recommend you keep this window open so you can compare with godot 3.0 as you make changes so i'm just going to minimize that close this and now we're going to open this one in godot 3.0 there we go let's scan go to my desktop Let's select this one, now let's scroll down and find the cannon shooting project here. Double click, select OK, it's just gonna ask if you want to open it because it doesn't find any versioning and so on. Now this is most definitely not going to work, so if we hit play we're gonna find an error. And the first error we have is the setup function isn't defined, so which setter are we talking about here? Export int ball speed 8, let's take a look at this one, copy, paste by using Ctrl F to search, and we can see the naming of this has changed for some reason. Now why, I don't know, maybe there's a perfectly logical reason that I don't know about, but that doesn't matter. I'm just gonna copy this, and replace this one. Okay, let's hit play one more time and find out if there's another issue, and we have one. The method is colliding isn't declared in the current class. What class are we currently in? We are in a kinematic body 2D. Now that is because in Godot 3.0 we don't have this function anymore, it has been removed, and we are now expected to use the move and collide instead. And that means we are now going to move and collide before we actually check if we have collided or not. So I'm just going to move this up here. And then I'm going to make a variable named collision entity. And I'm going to use this in here. So if collision entity is true, let me remember to close this here. If collision entity is true, we are going to explode impact. Now you can also just do the collision entity is not null, to be more explicit of what we are checking here, because this itself is not technically a boolean expression. So if collision entity is not null, we are going to explode an impact. And disable physics process and just return, because we're done then. If we're not going to explode impact, we're going to get the collider to the entity, which no longer which no longer is relevant. We're going to apply physics and movement, which also no longer is relevant, because we are exploding an impact now. So I'm just going to remove this, we don't need that anymore. And we can actually remove this as well, because we this is the default behavior of our little application now. We are exploding in, on impact, but I can leave that there for now. We don't need to change that yet. So let's try hitting play and see what needs to be changed here. Invalid call, non-existent function is editor hint in scene, in base scene tree. And that's because is editor hint is now in engine. Let's close this, hit play again. And now it's playing. Let's hit space and see what happens. It stops and tells us we have invalid type and function play in the audio stream player 2D. Let's take a look here. We are trying to send in a string here and we don't do that anymore. The 
all the old stream player 2D now takes in one clip. And I don't know why they have chosen to do that way now, but that's the way to do it. So that means we have to look now in the canon scene. Let's just find it under resources, entities, and canon. Open the scene. So let's go down here, take a look and see what we have stored here. We have a sample player, and that is right here. And this does not have a stream, so let's select that, hit load, and let's find the order we want for our canon. Under entities, canon, assets, SFX, and this one. Let's stop this, I hit play again, and see if we get a new error or if we have the same error. Good, we are moving forward. So let's see, we have the same type of error, but now we are in a different uh, script in our cannonball scene. So I'm going to remove this. I'm going to open the cannonball scene as well. Take a look and see what we've stored in the node here. Here we have another sample player 2D and the stream is empty. So let's load the audio, go to entities, we go to cannon, cannonball, assets, explosion. Let's stop and try again. Okay, it seems to have moved forward here, and now it's chained to its tiny ball. And why is that? Let's find out. Uh, okay, we try to explode now. It's emitting particles. Uh, we are playing the sound now. We are hiding the sprite, and we are trying to set trigger to true in order to disable the collision. Now this no lo is no longer available, I believe, in the collision object, which is a uh, collision shape 2D. We have to disable it completely, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to set disabled to true. Because the only reason we're doing this is so we don't collide with the other cannonballs. And frankly, we may not even need this. We could possibly just change the layer and mask on this. But let's just set this to true for now and hit play and see what happens. Okay. So what we're seeing didn't freeze, but we're playing. And the particles just seem to be a ball and then disappear. Let's try to fix the particles, shall we? Let's go to our cannonball. Let's take a look at our particles. Now we do have a message here. No configuration warning. A material to process the particles is not assigned, so no behavior is imprinted. So in Godot 3.0 we have something called process material. So let's open that, select a new particles material, and select that one more time. So if I hit play, let's take a look and see what's what will happen. Now if I'm right, it's going to just apply some sort of gravity, and it'll just move a little bit. And it did, so let's close that, take a look at which configuration we have to do. Now I don't believe we have to change any of these. Now the direction I want to change, I want to increase the spread to 180. I'm going to remove any value set in direction, because we want to go all directions. I'm going to make sure we disable gravity, because on, in an explosion we don't really want to go that in depth in physics, we just want to go boom. Let's take a look at initial velocity here, it's zero. Let's increase that to 700. Is there anything else we want to change? Now I believe there's a uh, an explosion config somewhere. There it is. Under the particles to themselves, we have a explosiveness. I'm gonna increase that to one. Let's hit play and see what happens. Shoot. Boom! Oh, that's beautiful. But we don't want it to go more than once. So I'm going to make sure we have a one shot on here. Let's hit play again. Ah, that's not too bad. It's a bit too big. It lasts a bit too long for it to have an impact. So let's reduce the lifeline to 0 0.25 and see if that makes a change. It's not too bad, it's similar to the way it was before. The cannon and the cannonball seems to be functioning well now, but the en enemy it does not seem to react to our collision. So let's first make sure we are colliding, so let's go to debug, let's enable visible collision shapes so we can take a look at the collision shapes himself. Hit play. Okay, so what we're seeing here, the collision shapes are overlapping, but I'm worried that the um, it's disabled before the enemy reacts to the collision. So let's try to mess a little around here. Let's remove this part by pressing Ctrl K just to comment it out. And let's hit play again. There we go. So we see it, it now reacts, so that means it was just a, an issue with the ordering of um, collision. We were disabling this too fast. What happens if I shoot fast? Okay, the cannonballs are colliding with each other now, so that, that's really the problem we tried to solve here. So let's change that by completely being separated from the, our own layer. Let's click this to make sure we don't share our own layer in any places. So if we now shoot fast, we shouldn't collide with each other anymore, and we are not. Now if you look closely now, you may have noticed that when we take damage, there is a period where we no longer take damage. Now from our last videos, we made an invisibility timer, meaning once you get shot, it takes a little while before you can get shot again. And that's fine, that's how most games do it. Now I do notice that the enemy doesn't actually disappear here, so there may be an issue with the signaling. They did make several changes to the animation signal in Godot 3.0, so let's find our enemy here. Let's open our enemy scene. Now let's take a look here. Let's open the script and let's see. 
we have an animation player, that's good. And well, when we have been collided with and we have been collided with a bullet and we are not in god mode, meaning we have not recently been taking damage and is uh, waiting for the timer to end here, so it is disabled. That means we are reducing our health, we're updating our health bar and that works, we can see it change. And we have a damage delay, we start, which is what actually causes uh, the delay between god mode or not. And then if we have died, unless helping less or equal to one, we are playing an animation. And we did see the animation, but this did not appear to trigger, because in Good or 3.0, the animation player has changed the name of the signal. Now I believe it's animation finished, but we can double check that by searching. So let's search help, search for animation player, select that, and let's take a look. There we go, signals, animation changed, animation finished, animation start, and cache is cleared. Now the one we want is animation finished, and keep an eye on that we are also expecting a string, so we will have to update that as well. So let me control W this to remove that, and let's update. Animation finished, on that finished, we're gonna take in the animation name. And the reason for that is quite logical. Now we don't need to add this after we start playing, I can add this on the top here. So regardless which animation is played, we can now handle how we want to, it to behave. So under ready here, I'm going to just put it right there. I'm going to rename this because now it's not just going to play when we die. It's going to play after every animation. So it's going to be on animation finished. I'm going to copy that. Go down up to this on animation finished. I'm going to take in the animation name. And if our animation name is equal to on death, that is when we want to perish and to go away. And that should hopefully solve this, so let's take a look here. We play, shoot, we play, shoot, do it a few more times, and there we go. Perfect. Let's remove the collision shapes here, because it looks better when it's disabled. Excellent! Now we are now ready to begin our future tasks of implementing new functionality. So if this video was helpful to you, please let me know, comment below. If you have any questions, also comment below. Perhaps I'm able to answer, perhaps someone else is able to answer, who knows? And thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye!